Um, if something is very important in the world, then uh, you want people to know about it, don't you? You know, I love Easter too. I love Easter. It's one of my favorite time of year is Easter. But we got to know how important Christmas was. <laughs> I mean, the Word of God, all through the Bible, God sends prophets. He sends uh, uh, different people. He sends uh, even angels to tell what's going to happen. And real quick, we want to look at the we want to look during a season of little over, uh, a little under six and a half months. God sent four messages. Four messages. Messengers. Same one sometimes, a lot of times. But the message came. And it was for, for a very important event that was coming. I mean, God doesn't do that all the time. How many knows God doesn't do that that many times? But he did this. Because he wanted the world to know, he wanted you and me to know how important this event was. This isn't something that happened every day. This is a one-time deal. Amen. That God would come to this world in the form of a baby. <laughs> I mean, in a... Very, I mean, how much uh, dependent form can you have than a baby? I mean, you know, it depends on somebody take care of it all the time. A baby does. But he still came in that form. I mean, that was the first time that God sent the messenger. Amen. It was in the book of Luke, chapter 1. To a man by the name of Zacharias. He was, he was burning incense in the, in the temple. And his wife and him had no child. As many of you know. Her name was Elizabeth. She was barren. And God was. He sent the angel. He even gave his name. How many know his name? His name was Gabriel. He sent the angel Gabriel unto Zacharias in chapter 1 of Luke, verse 11, it goes like this. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of the incense. And Zacharias saw him and was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayers is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God. And he shall go and before, get this now, and he shall go before him, him, who's him? Who do you think he's talking about? Talking about Jesus, amen. In the spirit and power of Elias. To turn the heart to the fathers, to the children, and the disobedient to wisdom of the just. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is stricken in years. And the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee to show thee things, these glad tidings. Amen. So he tells him there about the prophecy of the Old Testament about the one going forth and crying in the wilderness, preparing the way. Right? So here's the first indication that the Lord is coming. <laughs> the Lord is coming. Amen. And so Elizabeth does conceive. And also in the book of Luke, we see the angel Gabriel once again appearing to a, to a teenage, a young woman named Mary. And we're going to find that it's been about six months since this happened. I just read to you. The first messenger came, right? And here, here comes the next one. 
And if you don't think Christmas is important, I know a lot of people, oh, it's Christmas. But see, you, you look, we're looking at it through the eyes of the world sometimes. Because the world has, has uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They have commercialized it to death. That doesn't mean that it wasn't important. <laughs> it is important. It was very important. That important enough that God sends these messengers to let the world know, to let you and I know. In the book of Luke, chapter 1, 26, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name is Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. She said, and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. For thou hast found favor of God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. I mean, where, where else do you find this stuff in the word of God? Amen. That God is so uh, detailed about what he's going to do. Right? He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. This is the sixth month with her. Told you six months later. Who, had, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Hallelujah. The second messenger came. The second message came. God's telling us, I'm coming. The prophecies have been told in Isaiah. The prophecies have been told in the minor prophets. The prophecies are written out all through in many places. And now it's finally come to pass. It's going to come to pass. The third appearance of the messenger was to a man by the name of Joseph. You'll find it in Matthew chapter 8, chapter 1. The story of her husband to be. And can you imagine? You all know how, how much of a shame this was, don't you? Especially in the day that Mary and Joseph was in. I mean, if you had a child and you didn't have a husband, you was marked off as bad. You're bad. <laughs> and how many people's going to believe you that this is uh, the Savior? <laughs> you know? And Mary, didn't, she didn't just carry that when she was with child. She carried that the rest of her life. Because people's going to say, oh yeah, that was Mary. She had her first son out of wedlock. You know she's going to carry that. Because people ain't going to believe. They like gossip. <laughs> but her husband knows the truth. Her to be husband. His spouse husband. Because God sends another messenger. In Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when he was... When, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. 
Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. The others he just appeared to. This one is a dream. Saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which she conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sin. Now all these things, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the, by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and called his name Jesus. Amen. The third messenger has come to proclaim the Son of God. Jesus is coming. He's coming. And we know that Mary went to Elizabeth, seen her, and was probably there until the son, her son was born, and then she returned. And she returned to Nazareth very pregnant. <laughs> then we know the taxes went out, and they went to Bethlehem, right? And the fourth messenger comes probably some of the poorest people upon the face of the earth at that time. Why didn't he come to the kings and priests? And why didn't he go to the princes and all these? He went to the shepherds, didn't he? You'll find this appearance in chapter 2, starting verse 8 of the book of Luke. Four times that I know of. Unless I missed one somewhere in this time period. It says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. He says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone about, round about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto us, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. <laughs> you think angels going to lie? No, this is the truth. This is what is happening. Amen. And we got four di different witnesses accounts already. I'm not done reading this, of course. And, that, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes while lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward man. The shepherds, and it came to pass, and here's when the shepherds found him. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them unto heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Amen. Amen. Four different messengers bringing the good news <laughs> of what God was doing in this world. Over 2,000 years ago, and it's still good today, 
We still rejoice and celebrate His birth today. I pray if we tarry a thousand years that they'll still be celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. I pray they will. I don't know. In our hearts and our minds until we leave this world, you and I should be thanking God for this day Amen. that God came to earth. And this is just not our belief. It's also the testimony and the witness of four different messengers that God said, this is an important event. You need to remember it. You need to remember it. You ought to celebrate it. I think we ought to celebrate it. As the Spirit of God leads us to celebrate. Not as the world directs us to do so, but as the Spirit of God leads us to celebrate. Amen. And you'll hear some people, oh, Christmas is a pagan nation and a pagan holiday and all this. Because it happened to fall, they've celebrated about the same time of other things. Amen. I don't care about none of that. I'm just going to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm just going to celebrate him coming to this earth. And that's how it began. Praise God. It's a good day to do it. I don't see a thing wrong with this day myself to do it. Amen. Somebody else may do it, but that's all right. Amen. Let them celebrate it on whatever day they want to. Praise God. I won't celebrate it on this day <coughs> because it's true. And God said it's important. It's important enough for him to send four different messages at different time periods before he came. If you don't see that as being important, I don't know what is. <laughs> I mean, did he do that even when he was crucified? No, they weren't angels came and pronounced the Lord's going to be crucified, crucified four different times. Amen. It was a very important event, and it was told about in the Old Testament many times. But this one, he sent messengers to speak and to let them know, this is me. This is not something that just happened. This is me. This, uh, this is from heaven. This is the Savior. This is the Messiah. This is the one you've been waiting on. This is, I mean, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't just Simeon <laughs> that was told by the Holy Ghost that you're going to see the salvation of the Lord before you die, which he did. He held him in his arm, the old priest, and he realized who is holding. He said, now I can die. <laughs> now I can die. My eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. Hmm. Witnesses. And then Anna come in, right? Wasn't that her name? Came in and testified and witnessed of the same thing. Amen. Hmm. But these was angels, y'all. These was God's messengers. Amen. He said, I'm here. And now we're waiting on what? For him to come back. Waiting on for him to come back. Amen. Thank the Lord. Diane, would you come to Pena, please? I, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. Uh, and I've enjoyed this service uh, today. Thank God for it. The songs and stuff has been done. This is what the Lord has laid up on my heart. And that's what all I can do, too, is what the Lord lays upon my heart. And now that's what I'm going to do. Amen. So we thank the Lord for each one, your songs and testimonies. Amen. It's just been good. And uh, I don't know what else you got planned for today, but I hope, pray that you'll enjoy it and just celebrate and have a great time in the Lord. Those who can, though, would you stand with us? Maybe somebody need to come pray. I know sometimes it's hard during holidays when loved ones are gone. But for Christians, say, man, that's just a, for a moment. That's just for a season. And our loved ones, will, they'll, they will come, they will go. But the meaning of Christmas will not. It's going to continue on down through the generations, hopefully as it has in the past. Anybody else need to come pray? Come on. Come on.
God knows every heart that's here. He knows what your need is. He knows. Yeah, it's a Christmas time, but I mean, we celebrate Jesus all year long. You come back Wednesday night and we're going to be celebrating Jesus in. And you come back next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating Jesus in. And the Sunday after, and the Wednesday after, and the Sunday after, and the Wednesday after, and I pray we'll just continue on doing so. Praise God. Amen. Celebrating Jesus. And how the Spirit of God will lead us and guide us. Amen. Anybody else need prayer? Need to pray. Hmm. I don't know about you all, but I've heard a lot of singing over the for uh, lately. Beautiful songs, and but when they mention the name Jesus, <laughs> something just stirs in my soul. I mean, it just stirs, and I just thank you, Lord. That name. Jesus. So who, who gave Jesus his name? Y'all catch that? Was it Mary or Joseph? Who was it gave him his name? Where did his name come from? Come from the messengers. Where did the messengers come from? God. God gave him his name. Amen. Come from God. Amen. Yeah. How'd you like to know and believe that God gave you your name? Be good, wouldn't it? God gave him his name. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Anybody? Everybody happy? Yeah. Amen. Good. Thank the Lord. All right. Good place to be. Appreciate everybody coming out. Um, keep smiling, though, okay? It's all good. Your name's in the book, right? He's coming back, right? Yeah, the world may be gone. And all those that forget God, he said they will be turned into hell. <laughs> Amen. But we're going to heaven. If you're, you're saved and born again, you're going to heaven. No matter what happened to the world or anything in it, you still get to go to heaven. All because of one person. And it started in a manger. Amen. Then on this side, it finished on the cross. And then in a tomb. Amen. But it ain't done yet. <laughs> He's coming back. Praise the Lord. He's coming back. Yeah. Amen. All right. Good to have everybody this morning. Uh, I don't, it ain't morning. I don't know what to call this. Amen. <laughs> I'll just call it service, just day, all right? Amen. But uh, we love you and we thank God for you. Uh, come out and be with us Wednesday. We did have a wonderful service Wednesday night. It was good. It was wonderful. Uh, we just thank God for what he did. Amen.